help us. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to Ezekiel chapter number 37. Ezekiel chapter number 37 this morning. If you find it in your Bibles, I would ask that you stand for the reading in the honor of God's Word this morning. And we are just going to go after this this morning. I pray that for the next few moments that I can have your undivided attention. Not that you necessarily hear what I have to say, but I want you to hear what God is saying today in the earth. We are at a unique season. There is lots of things to celebrate. But there is a great responsibility for you and I in this room that are waving the banner of Christianity of all ages. Where much is given, what does the Bible say? Much is required. There has been much given to the church in this moment of time. You say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Please hear me. There is a freshness of the Holy Spirit that has been given and entrusted to the men and women of God in this hour. Now, we are required to be stewards of it, not controllers of it, not to make it our own, but we have to make sure that we steward what God has for this moment of time in history. And I believe that as I've spent a long some time alone with the Lord and have really sought the Lord for today, this morning as well as this evening. I, I was drawn back to this very familiar passage of Scripture for many of you in this room. And we have heard it taught and preached from many times, but I think it's important for us to revisit it because I do feel like that there is a very unique moment happening today in America. Now, I know what's happened the last couple of weeks, but there's a significance about today. Here in a few hours, there's going to be, I'm believing, that there is going to be 20,000 plus that arrives in Lexington, Kentucky at Rump Arena. This is not a, this is not a gathering just to have a gathering. I understand that men have worked and tried to assemble it, and they are trying to steward it. But this is a, and as I've prayed over this, I want you to understand that this is something that's, I think they have a general idea of what they want to accomplish today, but there's something that spiritually is going to take place two hours from here in just a few hours. Okay. And, and I'm not, this isn't hype, but I'm here to tell you that there is a second wave yes. of something that God's getting ready to do. Yes. And I'm thankful for what has been up to this point. But I firmly believe, and I'm going to walk this through scripture in just a moment, but I firmly believe that today is going to be a day like it was in Acts chapter 2. There is an upper room visitation getting ready to come to our nation. And there is an empowering and equipping of the Holy Ghost that's getting ready to hit America. And what we have seen is just the birthing of something very unique. So with that been said let me take us to Ezekiel 37 verse number 1 through verse number 10 the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold they was very many in the open valley and lo they was very dry meaning this there was no spiritual life and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, this is Ezekiel speaking. He said, I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, 
prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel responds in verse 7 and says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Somebody say noise. Now, if you take that back to the Hebrew, it says there was a voice. So you could read it in a manner that says, I prophesied, and there was a voice, and behold, a shaking. And the bones come together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up on them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me again, Ezekiel, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe up on these slain, that they may live. So Ezekiel once again, somebody say a willing vessel. So again, he prophesied as commanded him and not breath, but the breath, but the breath came into them and they lived and stood up on their feet an exceedingly great army. Praise the Lord. Slow down, Ron. Get through it before you preach just a moment, all right? For a few moments today, not only am I going to look at a willing vessel, but I want to talk to you about a noise, a wind, and a reversal. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. Lord, I pray for the next few moments your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts in a manner, Lord, where we'd never be the same. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. and amen. amen. Thank you for honoring the word of the Lord this morning. Allow me to say this morning that I truly believe that today is a day in which we must allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the hour to us in which we find ourselves. It is one thing for us to assume. It is one thing for us to draw conclusions based on our intellectual understanding. But it is another thing to lean not into our understanding, but to trust in the the things of God. And therefore, today, I believe it's of utmost importance for you and I to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the true depth of this hour and this moment. I personally feel like we can obtain insight of what we are experiencing when and only when we allow him to take us back to the written word of God. The Holy Spirit is not a thing, but it is a part. He is part of the Godhead. Therefore, today we know this. If we were going to talk about the Holy Spirit, he has a being. He has a will. There's many things that he operates in. He is a, uh, one that speaks not of, his, uh, uh, of the ideals of men, but he speaks that of the Father. And therefore, we can talk about the Holy Spirit. But today, I want us to go into what is really his office of what he's supposed to do in this moment of time and what he is doing. While we know that this scripture text is dealing with the nation of Israel, it also provides us with the insight on how our God operates on behalf of his children. Not just in one specific time in history, but throughout history. If you were to read just another verse in this passage of scripture that we read, you would find these words. Then he said unto me, God speaking to Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. 
they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost and that we are cut off. That's what they say. But then if you read the following passages, you would find that the Lord tells Ezekiel to prophesy to them the third time and basically says, tell my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and I will bring you into a land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And when I have opened up your graves, oh, my people, and brought you up out of your graves, not only am I going to take you to a place, but I'm going to put my spirit in you and you're going to live. And you will know that it is I that has put you in the place of your land. Now, you say, why is that important? Is because when we look throughout not just biblical history, but we look through modern history, we know this, that in the month of May in the year 1948, that this, which was written in Ezekiel 37, 12 through 14, that came into a prophecy, not future, but a prophecy that's fulfilled. Because we find that in 1948, Israel became a nation again. They were restored back to their homeland. And you have to realize that that was a land that had laid barren for an extended period of time, but now it is a land that is thriving and growing and developing. It's amazing what's taking place where the enemy said it will never be. Now, I'm not going to teach on that this morning, but I believe it's important for us to understand that when you look at the word of God, that you find that his word is always accomplished. Doesn't matter what men does. Doesn't matter what kind of opposition we may see naturally. But when God speaks something in his timing, in his season, it comes to a place of fruition. May I say to you today that there are those in our nation, as well as many other nations, that have the same vision concerning their land that Israel had concerning their land and their current condition. Many people today would simply say this, our bones are very dry and our hope is lost and that we are cut off, meaning this, uh, we're not what we used to be and we're not ever going to experience what we once had and it's, it's nothing but negativity and, and I really, uh, in, the, in the natural realm, I can't critique them too much uh, because if you're looking at a lot of things in our nation as well as many other nations, uh, from the natural point of view, they're there is reason for much concern uh, because naturally uh, when you see things uh, happening the way they are, it is very easy to quickly become discouraged uh, and doubtful uh, that things will ever change because of what you see daily. But I mentioned this verse uh, just a week ago and I was drawn back to it again. Paul writes, and he's not writing to the world, but he's writing to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9, and this is what he says, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Do you understand today that there has been things that God has prepared, and it has been prepared for them that love him, and therefore there is nothing that can stop that which God has prepared. That should excite you and I this morning. But one may ask, how do we know this is true? When we begin to look at the word of God and we look at history, we see the very nature of God concerning the people that he calls his own. There's another time in the history of Israel that we find that everything has been annihilated. They've been in captivity. They come back out of captivity and they begin to rebuild the temple. Solomon's temple had been destroyed. They began to rebuild it just to find themselves uh, uh, surrounded by adversaries. And every time they start, uh, they begin to find difficulty. They begin to find opposition. They begin to prepare the foundation. Everything is happening. It looks like we're moving. Everything now is changed. Everything is put on hold. But we find that uh, the prophet Haggai in chapter 2 and verse 9, he, when you read that, is simply there's a word that comes to this group of people at this time in history. It says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. In that moment, there wasn't no peace to be had. In that moment, 
moment, it didn't look like there was a reason to be excited. Uh, in that moment, it didn't look like there was a reason to be hopeful because every time they tried to do something, uh, they encountered resistance. Uh, but how many knows that temple was rebuilt uh, and the glory of the Lord did come? Uh, and can I tell you uh, today, uh, you and I, if that isn't enough for us, uh, we can look in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. After Jesus has came, he's uh, served uh, his earthly ministry uh, for three and a half years. He has now went to the cross, uh, and right before his ascension into heaven, uh, he begins to speak to a group of people, uh, and he simply says that not many days from now, you'll be endued with power from on high. And notice, if you read verse 8 of that chapter, it says, and you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, uh, and you'll be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, is Samaria in the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, now, we know uh, that after you get over another chapter in Acts chapter 2, it says this, at the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, uh, and it came and it set upon them uh, as fire, as cloven tongues of fire. And what am I saying is this, uh, that there were specific times in history uh, where God has said things, but then God brought those things into fulfillment. Uh, I give us these reminders this morning to just lay a foundation uh, for one reason. Uh, God never equips his own uh, with less. Uh, he always desires to take them to a higher place uh, and a deeper depth. Uh, where we are right now uh, is not by happenstance, please hear me, uh, but it is by God's design. May I remind us this morning uh, that there has always Always been labor and sacrifice uh, that has prepared the arrival of the suddenlies. Uh, what has happened in our nation two weeks ago uh, on a college campus because 19 young people decided to stay after a routine chapel service uh, did not just cause a suddenly where now 12 days, 13 days later, over 100,000 people walked in a little town of 6,000. Uh, that was not just a suddenly that occurred. No, uh, but since the last move of God, please hear me, in the 70s uh, in Asbury, uh, there has been faculty and staff and administration uh, that has desired to have it again. Uh, and they have labored, uh, they have sacrificed, uh, they have prayed. Uh, and because of their faithfulness uh, in God's timing, uh, he says, I'm going to reward them with a suddenly. Uh, can I tell you this morning uh, that Asbury uh, is not the only place that men and women have labored and sacrificed. Uh, you see, well, I don't understand why it went to 20 some odd other colleges. Uh, it's because I can tell you uh, that even in the secular universities uh, that there has been men of God and women of God uh, that have walked to their designated place day after day uh, in the midst of all hell uh, and they said this probably in some form or fashion. Uh, Lord I claim this territory and I claim these children. Uh, Lord I'm not going to lose every one of them but give me some. Uh, and what they was doing every day while they was going to teach their respected course. Uh, they was laboring uh, and they was sacrificing uh, and because of that uh, it has begun to set the atmosphere uh, and God says for such a time as this. Uh, can I tell you it does not make sense by man's calendar uh, but can I tell you this morning uh, that what has happened uh, is that we're in this moment uh, where a suddenly has been released supernaturally uh, not because men ask for it uh, but because God says this is the season uh, and this is the moment. Uh, we are beginning to witness the effects uh, of a willing vessels uh, that have stood and prophetically spoken uh, even when it wasn't popular. So I want to pause just for a moment. And I want to take a moment and I want to honor every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that had the courage to trust in what God was saying to them and then they boldly stood and spoke it even in the midst of the face of darkness. Can I tell you, there has been many 
that have paved the way for this moment. And because of what they have done, over the last two weeks, we have begun to see and experience what Ezekiel was shown in Ezekiel 37. You say, what in the world are you talking about? Let me take you back to Ezekiel 37, 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. Now, let me pause here for a moment. I want you to get this in your spirit. I know it's a little different this morning. Stay with me. We find this. Ezekiel, a man of God, begins to be taken into what you can call an open vision, if you will. God awakens his spirit. And he lets him see spiritually. It says this, he carried me and he, in the spirit And he set me down in the midst of a valley. And then he calls me, get this, then he calls me to pass by them round about. So the Spirit of the Lord takes this man in some way, shape, or form, sets him in a valley. This valley is filled with dry bones all around him. But then the same man, at the same time he's done that to, somehow, as only God can, takes him to almost... It looks like an outer body experience because then it takes him and lets him begin to go around and see himself and everything else that's going on in that. And as he's looking and as he's exposed to this, he says, what do you see? And notice what happens. It says that he began to ask him the question, can these bones live? And he said, Lord, only you know. But then the Lord gave him a word, said, I want you to prophesy unto him that they'll have breath coming to them, they'll begin to live. Okay, we just read all of that. But here's what I want you to notice. Because he was a willing vessel, and he began to prophesy, at the moment that he began to speak this word in power and in faith, all of a sudden it says this, that there, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. There was a release of a prophetic utterance in our nation just a little better than two weeks ago. And because of that, there was a noise. You see, what we think is this mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit isn't even what we've experienced yet. I'm thankful for the cry of repentance that we've heard. Okay. But the cry of repentance is not the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's different. But you can't have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit until, first of all, you can have the cry of repentance. Now, when the cry of repentance begins to come forth, notice there's a noise. And notice when this noise took place, it says, Behold, there was a shaking, and bone came together, bone to his bone, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews uh, and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them yet, meaning this. But all of a sudden, something happened. The first stage of this suddenly was this. There was a coming together. Now, for those of you that have been following this move of God in our nation that now has touched Uganda and many other places around the globe, what you're finding is this. This is not, not, not uh, within the walls of a specific denomination, but it has crossed denominational barriers. And when you walk into the room, uh, you are amongst believers of all different walks of life, uh, all different creed, uh, all different opinions. Uh, but what has happened is, uh, is that there has been a noise and the noise has caused a coming together so what we have witnessed in two weeks is nothing more than a unity a spirit of unity and now notice with me while the spirit of unity has
has come together and now we see something. We see a figure. Uh, we see a body. Uh, can I tell you, even though you see a body, uh, there is not a spirit yet in that body. Uh, but can I tell you, oh, I'm going to preach this morning while you sat there. Uh, because can I tell you, uh, in this body, uh, there was still no life. Now, I'm thankful for the noise uh, that has brought the body together. Uh, but I got to tell somebody in this room, God, help me this morning. Uh, what I'm about to tell you is this. Uh, while the noise is exciting, uh, this is not that. Can I tell you this morning, when, 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 when everybody said, oh, these men are drunk, uh, but Peter stood up and says, these men are not drunk as you suppose, uh, but this is that uh, which the prophet Joel spoke of. Uh, oh, come on, somebody. I got to tell you this morning, uh, we're excited about the noise, uh, but the noise isn't all there is. Uh, but the noise uh, sets the stage uh, for the wind. Uh, and I got to tell somebody today uh, that you better get ready uh, because there is a wind uh, of the Spirit of God uh, that's about to hit our nation. Uh, oh, somebody ought to give him a clap of praise for what's about to happen. Oh, I'm not talking about two months from now. I'm not talking about three weeks from now. But I'm here to tell you that where the noise is, is where the wind came to. And there's a noise. Listen, there's a coming together of the noise just a couple hours from here. And it's about to bring a generation into a place where they're not just a body that's experienced some noise, uh, but it's a group of young men and women uh, that's about to have an encounter uh, with the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, over the next few days starting today, uh, I will go on record this morning and tell you uh, that there is a new prophetic release uh, that it's going to transition us uh, from the noise uh, and take us to the place where we're living uh, in the release of the wind. I sense this morning we have been commissioned. Man, I wish I had some energy this morning. Uh, I, I, since we have been commissioned uh, to do that, uh, which Ezekiel did, uh, I didn't come with a super message today. Uh, I didn't come with a sermonette uh, just to tell you it's okay. Uh, but I come with a word from the Lord this morning to tell you uh, that there is a second utterance uh, that's been released from the platforms of America and around the globe today by men of God and women of God. Uh, and this utterance uh, that has been released today uh, is going to cause not a breath uh, but the breath uh, to be released uh, and there is a generation uh, that will not die uh, but they are going to live uh, and they are going to stand up uh, and they are going to be an exceedingly uh, great army. God help me this morning. Listen to me. I know it's not going to look like it used to, and I don't care. Listen. If, if, if this is what you think you have to have uh, to have a revival, God help you. Uh, if you think you gotta have a clean shaved face and uh, everybody gotta have dresses on, uh, listen, God help you. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, I'll probably be back in this house tonight with my tennis shoes and my, sh uh, my sweatshirt uh, because I've come to work. Uh, I'm not coming to please anybody. Uh, I'm coming to tell you today uh, that you're gonna have to get rid of some stuff uh, and you're gonna have to get to a a place uh, where you say, God, I like the noise, uh, but I'm ready for the wind uh, because I know that the wind uh, does something even greater. Oh, my, my, my. This wind is nothing other than the fresh baptism. Uh, it's not man's baptism. Uh, it's not holiness baptism like some think it's got to be. Uh, but it is fresh uh, Holy Ghost and fire uh, that will begin to consume sin uh, and bring about a move of God to a generation. I, I, I don't know this. Listen, it irritates me. 
It irritates me when we get this, oh, bless God, if it was really God. Really. Really. I just need somebody. Don't need everybody. Just need somebody to say, God, I believe you can. And I believe you will. Listen, I, I, I've seen too many things. While we say self-righteous, listen, you, you've not had to maybe go through some of the things that many of us in this room has had to go through. Uh, you've not had to sit with babies. Uh, you've not had to sit with families uh, that, that, that has been upside down uh, because of the curse of sin. Uh, listen, I, I've had to sit with families. Uh, I, don't, I wish I had the answer. Uh, but listen, I, I can't answer every question. Uh, but all I can do is love on them and give them hope in Jesus. Uh, it's not always easy. Uh, can I tell you, uh, when I'm sitting with a grieving family, they don't want my religion, uh, but they want the love of my Jesus. Uh, that's what they want. Uh, and listen, the only way I can give them that uh, is if I got a place uh, where they're being alone, uh, where the wind has saturated me, uh, where I can walk with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, uh, where I know what to say and what not to say, uh, when I know what to do and when I know not what to do. Listen, uh, we need this thing desperately today, not just on our children. But us senior saints, we need a freshness as well. Can I remind you, Acts chapter 2 isn't the only time they experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You just read over a couple other chapters. They was filled again. Listen, I, I, I'm glad he's the God that does it again. And again. And again. And again. Please hear me this morning. I'm hurrying. I want to stand today and tell you that you and I, in a, one of the greatest moments, that is this, that there is a prophetic utterance. Now notice what happens. The noise comes. The shaking comes. The unity comes. But there's no breath in them, and that's when Ezekiel hears again, now prophesy not to the bones, but to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath. I wish I had time to preach this this morning. Now, that's one thing just to say, oh, come four winds, oh, breath, come. God says come. But don't stop there. You got to really read this. This man of God begins to take authority, begins to operate in dominion, begins to operate in his God-given call, and he simply says, oh, breath, come from all four corners, and don't just blow, don't just breathe, but you come and you breathe up on these that are slain that they may live. There was a specific instruction given. I know this sounds really strange to some of you in this room, but you stay with me. And I will not have to defend my, my message this morning because it will defend itself. The word of the Lord will defend it because I, I'm here to tell you, I know God's moving in many places around the globe. But I'm telling you, at the epicenter of where this noise has started, there has now been a facilitation take place where this noise is now even unified on a level that it's not yet been. Because we have multiple, multiple campuses and multiple churches of all denominations that right now, many of them are not even in church this morning because they've released their young people and everything. And if we hadn't had so much going on and I hadn't been sick, I probably wouldn't be here this morning. And your young people probably wouldn't be here this morning. But God knows what he's doing. So it is what it is. But at the same time, I can tell you this, there is an emerging taking place right now. I said, God, why do I need to do this? And this, is, this may sound bizarre. He said, I want you to stand on your platform Sunday morning, and I want you to just speak to the wind. Hallelujah. 
So I'm on assignment this morning. I, I don't even care if you listen to me. Because I didn't really come talk to you today. Don't be offended. But I just come to just speak and say, oh, breath. Come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I'm speaking to the breath of God this morning. And don't just come and breathe. But the breath of God, I release the breath of God this morning. To blow and to settle down upon those that were slain. And I speak and I command the breath of God to go to Rump Arena in the name of Jesus and be there before the children get there. And I decree and declare that there is a release that's getting ready to happen. And these that are slain are getting ready to experience a breath that they may live. Here's what I want you to do. I know this is really going to stretch some of you right now. Right in the middle of this message, before I go any further, I want you to stand right now by the unction of the Spirit. I want you to turn and face south. You say, where's south? It's that way. <laughs> now I want you, you say, why in the world are we doing that? It's because Kentucky's south. Sometimes you got to go down to get to up. Sometimes you got to go down to get to heaven. That's what some of you would say in this room. But right now, I want you to stretch your hands. I want you to stretch. I know. You're, you're, you're two hours and ten minutes from that place. But right now, in your own words, right in the middle of this message, I want you to release the breath of God. And say, I want you to stand. I want you to lift your voice. I don't know why you're so quiet. I don't know why you're having to whisper. I want you to take the authority that God's given you right now. Command the breath of God right now. That's it. Just pray. Just pray. Oh, breath, go specifically to that place where for those that were slain, that they will live. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thank you for what's about to take place in that arena. Lord, I thank you for what's about to take place in that arena this afternoon. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I thank you. They're about to live. They're about to live. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Lord, as we're standing together right now with our hands lifted that way, Lord, not only am I speaking and releasing the wind, Lord, to settle down upon that specific place this afternoon, that there would be a fresh baptism, a fresh wind come. But, Lord, I pray right now for every teenager, young adult that's within the vicinity that, that has no idea of what's about to take place, that's bound by darkness. Lord, let there just right now be a drawing take place in their heart. They, they don't even understand. But, Lord, I pray for the one that's right now that's within the vicinity, uh, that's in that area, in that region. Lord, let there just begin to be a drawing. Lord, that they would begin to find themselves downtown Lexington. They, they don't even have a plan to be there today. But, Lord, I pray that instead of taking the bypasses, Lord, they'd just come. They'd be brought to the epicenter of that city. And, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would draw them. Lord, I thank you for salvation that's about to come. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the, for, the, for the ones that the enemy's about to loose its grip on today. Uh, but, Lord, I begin to speak life. Uh, I begin to speak words uh, of release over that generation in that region right now uh, that's going to be drawn and sucked into there today. Uh, Lord, unexpectedly. Uh, Lord, I, I, I speak to that which is bound by addiction. Uh, and Lord, I release them in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, let them experience a love uh, in the atmosphere uh, around the city today. Uh, Lord, that they are not expecting. Uh, and Lord, I pray for a visitation to come to them. And Lord, I give you praise and glory for it even now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you believe what we've just prayed right now, I want you to give God a hand clap of praise as, we, as we're going to finish this thing. I mean, you really believe it right now. 
You really believe God's about to do something. I'm not, going, I'm not trying to work you up, but you really believe God's about to do something. I want you to give him praise right now. Go ahead and thank him right now for what he's about to do. Hallelujah. You may be seated just for a moment. I'm going to finish this. This noise is about to bring an equipping of a generation. I want to speak to moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas in this room very quickly. I will go today and stand before you and tell you this. You're getting ready to witness uh, the desires uh, of your children and your grandchildren beginning to change. Some of you are going to be totally uh, blown off course, so to speak, uh, by the transformation process that they're getting ready to take uh, on because their path, their desire, their focus is going to be different. Uh, And you may have thought, well, this is the path that they have. Uh, But the Lord is saying, I'm redirecting them uh, and I'm going to change their course completely uh, because the path that they're on is the path that man has created for them, but it's not the design that I had for their life. Uh, And he would say to you today, uh, and, and this is what I hear in my spirit. Uh, He would say to mom and dad today, don't worry about the sudden change. Uh, Don't worry about the expense of yesterday's to get them to where they are. Uh, But don't worry. uh, But simply give yourself to a place of prayer is what the Lord says. uh, Because I know uh, that you are going to need my help, says the Lord, uh, to steward them uh, for the glory of my kingdom. Uh, He says, listen, uh, moms and dads, uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, And don't be down uh, because uh, it's not going to look like you had envisioned it to look. Uh, But God says, my ways is higher than your ways. Uh, My plans is higher than your plans. Uh, My purposes is greater. Uh, And he says, I cannot release everything to you because then you would try to take control of it uh, and try to manipulate it and make it happen. Uh, But God says, in my timing, uh, there's a generation that's about to walk with authority uh, and prophetic utterances. uh, And I'm going to give them the platform that they're needed. Uh, I'm going to be the one that completes their education. Uh, I'm going to be the one that takes them into a place uh, where by my spirit I will teach them and show them everything that they need. Uh, As this wind has been released, uh, we must realize it is not the breath of men uh, but it is the breath of God. Uh, And just like in the beginning uh, when God breathed into the man that he created in Genesis 1, 26 and 28 uh, and then in Genesis 2 and 7 uh, when the Lord formed him out of the dust of the ground uh, and he breathed into his nostrils uh, and the breath of life was entered in. Uh, He became a living soul. Uh, Notice in that moment something happened. Uh, Adam was laying there. He had a form. Uh, He had a covering. Uh, He had an image Uh, but there wasn't no life in him. Uh, But the moment that God breathed into his nostrils uh, it says he became a living soul uh, and he began to live uh, and then he stood up. Uh, I want to tell somebody this morning uh, You're going to have to get rid of everything that you've heard. Oh, this generation, oh, it's this, it's that. I'm here to tell you there's an exceedingly great army that's about to stand up. And the only reason they're standing up is because there's a breath that's getting ready to go into their nostrils. And in there, when the breath goes into their nostrils, they will begin to live. So devil, you've lost again. Devil, you are not going to get them. I just come to tell you this morning uh, that there uh, is a visitation uh, and this reversal uh, is about to take place. I'm thankful for the noise. I'm already thanking him for the wind that's coming that's on its way even today. But I'm more excited about what I haven't even said to you yet because everybody says it ain't going to happen. But I just feel like something good is about to happen. And I just feel like something good is on its way. What is it? It is a divine reversal. What are you talking about, preacher? Listen, Israel says, oh, it's over for us. We can't make it any longer. Our hope is cut off. But a prophet comes 
and says, I know what they say, but I also know what he says. Also knows what? What they say they see and what I see, but also caught a glimpse of what he's getting ready to do. Can I tell you this morning, I don't have it all figured out, but I got a glimpse. And the glimpse is, there is a source of life that's about to enter into this generation. And the noise is about to stand in power. And as they stand, they're getting ready to stand. And as they are equipped and clothed for this season and for this moment, they are going to be used to help usher in a reversal I don't care how much they promote it. I don't care how much they try to get you to believe it. Wokeism is dead. There's some agendas. It's going to die very quickly. A lot of this stuff that we've dealt with over the last three years in a very tiring manner. Please hear me. There is a reversal that's about to take place and we have a generation that's about to receive this power and they are going to use, be used for a spiritual war. Amen. Because listen, I wish I could stand here and tell you this morning, oh, from this day forward, you're not going to have a problem. I'm not going to tell you that. But grab, grab a hold of your seat or grab a hold of the hand of the person beside you because you're probably going to need their help. Because what I'm getting ready to tell you, and that is this. From this day forward, we're getting ready to enter into a spiritual warfare that we have never known. The enemy is going to do everything in his power to try to distract and to discourage God's people. So that they will not experience this standing up of this exceedingly great army. But can I tell you today. And I want to tell you, I think by the unction of the Holy Ghost today. that I need to inform you that no matter what he tries, he will not prosper. You hear me? There's a reason that Paul simply said, put on the whole armor of God. Because he knew there was times of war. And we're entering into that time of war. I don't say that to scare you or frighten you or discourage you, but I'm here to tell you we're getting ready to rage war like we never have raged war. But can I tell you, the same God that told Israel, I believe is the same God that's speaking to us today, and I want you to hear me. This is not our fight. But we're in a place where I hear the Lord saying this, get dressed for battle and go stand before the enemy because today... I will fight for you, and you will know that I am your God. So I'm not afraid of the noise of the enemy. But I'm here to tell you today, this is a time where the church in America is going to have to quit trying to figure it out and try to get all the answers and get back to where this is a walk of faith, where they say, okay, God, you said it, I believe it. I'm going to walk in that, and we're getting ready to see God do what God does. A mighty reversal is coming. What's that look like, preacher? It's going to look different for every one of you in your life and in your family. But corporately, it's going to look where we're going to see the winds of revival be burning brighter than they burned since the 70s. And what's getting ready to go forth from this nation in the midst of war, in the midst of an, an unstable region, in the midst of all kinds of uncertainty, there's going to be one thing that is certain that comes from America. When the midst of a vacuum of having no leadership on either side of the aisle to speak of, to brag about today, in the midst of men and women on both sides of the aisle that is desiring and doing everything in their power to take us into a place of war that God does not want us in, and in the midst of all of the uncertainty, there is going to be one thing that's certain, and that is this. There is an anointing of spiritual leadership and headship coming to the church, and America is not going to be known for its political policy. It's not going to know, be known for its military might, but America is going to be known for the God that is visiting it in this moment. You hear me this morning. 
Some of your sons and daughters and your grandchildren are getting ready to bring the biggest victory to the kingdom and is going to deliver the deepest blow to the enemy that it's known in recent history because of this win that's coming. And I believe the settling down today, not that we haven't had it before, but there is a corporate wind that's coming to the place of the noise. And that wind is going to cause a generation to stand up. So what's that mean? It means you and I, mommies and daddies, grandmas and grandpas, as I shared last week, it's time for you and I to begin to go up the mountain and get ready to extend our hands in intercession, and we're getting ready to see victory. There is some promises that's about to be received as they come to the music this morning. I'm here to tell you today, there is a wave of healing getting ready to come. There is a wave of anointing that's getting ready to come, and it's getting ready to come and bring with it a healing manifestation. Mental illness is going to be dealt with in this country. And many of the things and the methods that's been used to deal with it is going to be exposed to be nothing more than demonic. And we're getting ready to find that God's going to bring a release and show himself mightily in that arena. And there is getting ready to be a healing movement. It's going to touch the mind, the emotion, and the physical being of young and old alike. And it's going to boggle the minds of the world. But the biggest resistance that this move of God is going to encounter is going to be from the religious people in the church. If you're around in your circle, and I'm going to say this, if you're in a circle where all it is is negative, negative, negative about what God has done in the earth, you need to get out of that circle and you need to get out of it quickly. Because what God is getting ready to do, you and I have not saw in our lifetime. We've heard about it. We've experienced little dabs of it. But we have never been saturated with the wind. It's getting ready to be released. Don't you let anybody stand before you and tell you that they're an expert of a revival. There is no such thing as an expert of a move of God because God does what God wants to do, how he wants to do. The only expertise that I have concerning a revival or a move of God is this, is from what I know is this, that God only moves in the midst of humility. And when men begin to puff up and say, I think we've got this figured out as a moment, they begin to kill what God's doing. We're not puffed up today. But we're operating in a place in an office of humility telling you this, that God loves you enough. He loves me enough and he loves this young generation enough to not leave them in the current condition they are, but he is commissioning them. And this is a day of commissioning, I believe, for the young adults and teenagers alike. Where God says, I'm getting ready to use you. But to this young generation, please hear me. You could not puff out your chest and say, oh, God's using me. No, no, no. The only reason that God's going to use you supernaturally in this realm and this season right now is because all these old people that's in this room, they've labored and sacrificed for years for you to have this moment. You know what? I, I truly believe this. What myself and Debbie and my family and this ministry family is getting ready to experience has nothing to do with my last 23 years of leadership in this ministry. But what we're getting ready to be blessed with and experience is because of the labor and the sacrifice of my mother and father. And the men and women that served alongside them, Brother John, all those years. God didn't forget. I was told this past week on a Tuesday night, a man that has no way of really knowing anything of what a dream and things that my father had. On a Tuesday night prayer meeting, I believe some of you was there this past Tuesday. Said, I felt like I 
needed to be at this meeting, that prayer meeting that Sister Vonda and others had been doing for some time now on Tuesday night. He said, the Lord showed me a flame of fire, and it was coming down 3rd Street Hill, and it came, and it just began to burn through this city. I can tell you, many, many years ago, my father, before we ever bought this piece of property, before we even started looking for anything, my father had a dream, and he said he saw this big ball of fire on the west side of town and saw it come down 44 and go down 3rd Street and began to have little balls of fire all the way through town. I believe the Holy Ghost and fire that's getting ready to fall upon this ministry isn't just for this house and that's getting ready to fall and higher praise and many other ministries all around this region is not just for their house but it's going to be cause little fires to begin to burn and you can say what you will you can believe what you want but we're getting ready to taste getting ready to taste and experience a reversal that the saints that came before us labored for and prayed for and while they didn't maybe see what they wanted to see in their lifetime they still remained faithful and you younger ones in this room especially you hear me for whatever reason it's in this moment God has decided to release the suddenly and he's putting the sword in your hand I, I don't want you to be scared of the sword because while you're swinging it we're going to be interceding and we're going to be laboring with you the noise the wind the reversal here's what I want to say as we stand This may be very bizarre for some of you. But I firmly believe, Brother Ken, that the United States of America is getting ready to come home. What's that mean? If you were to read in your Bibles, Luke chapter number 15. There was a man that had two sons, an elder and a younger. The younger said, give me what is mine. He went and he wasted it with riotous living. But when he would have ate the husk that the swine would eat, he came to himself and said, there was more than enough at my father's house. I'm no longer worthy to be a son, but I'll go back and tell him I'll just be a servant. The United States of America is still a very young nation. We're a younger son. We was created differently than everything around us because we came here because our founders wanted a place of freedom to worship. We lost our way. We've been living in a hawk pen in a foreign land. We've been wasting everything with riotous living. But in the midst of our despair, There's been an awakening. And there is a generation saying, there's more than this. There's a, I think we'll just go home. I'm thankful for the garment that's about to be put upon my nation. Please forgive me if I'm a little emotional this morning but I'm thankful for the garment that God's about to give us I'm not talking about political things this morning but I'm here to tell you there's an authority getting ready to rise above any white house or state house or capitol building that there is an authority coming back to the church
and this noise and this wind and this reversal that I'm talking about, if I could give it a picture, if I could get you to see anything at all, what I'm telling you is this, is there's a reclothing taking place today is when it begins. There's a garment getting ready to be laid on a generation. But he's not just giving them a garment. But he's getting ready to put a ring of authority on their hand. There's about to be put something back on the hand of the church. And it's got a significant seal on its hand. And it means this. It gives me authority. I can do things in the authority of my father. That's why the hands of the saints is about to lay on the sick and they're going to recover because of the ring. That's why you can't see it physically is the ring, the spiritual authority that's given to us. We're getting ready to reverse some things. Am I making sense to anybody in this room? And can I tell you, we're not going to walk barefoot anymore because we're not servants. We're while we're, we serve, but we're not servants. We're, we're heirs and joint heirs. You know what that means? We're king's kids this morning. Do you understand that you are standing in the presence of royalty? Oh, my God. But not just any type of royalty. But you're standing in the presence of royalty that has the authority over all authority. And therefore we can walk and with confidence say, you know what, I'm thankful for the noise. But I'm also thankful for the wind and the reversal. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. So right now, if any of this makes sense to anybody in this room today. I wonder if there's anybody that say simply say, Lord, do it right now. Do it right now. Do it right now. Maybe you're under the sound of my voice and you say, no, I've experienced God in days gone by. But, you know, I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be with him right now. I'm going to tell you, today's the day of salvation. I don't care how many times you stopped and started, stopped and started, stopped. And started. I don't, none of that matters to me. What matters is that you understand this. There's a noise taking place right now. And because of that noise, there is a wind that's about to be released. And can I tell you, when that wind comes, it changes everything. You say, what do you mean it'll change everything? Can I tell you, when that wind comes, it made a lion fisherman, cussing fisherman, begin to stand and preach with power and authority. Listen, changes everything. I'm thankful that everything's about to be changed. And some of you are so nervous about what's about to change. Just go with the change. Because God's about to do something wonderful and beautiful. A generation's about to fall in love with Jesus. If you're under the sound of my voice this morning, though, and you say, you know what, I need to make sure everything's right with me and the Lord. I want to talk to you first right now. Without hesitation, I'm not going to beg, I'm not going to plead, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to tell you right now, if you want it, you can have it. But you're going to have to say, God, I, I want you to give it to me. He stands at the door and he knocks. He says, would you come, would you come, would you come? Listen, this morning, if you want to have a closer experience with God, I want you to step out of your seat right now and come join me in front of this building. Right now, right now. Come, 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 come. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. I'll, listen, you say, I want more, I want more. I want you to come right now, right now. Hallelujah. God knows exactly where you are right now, and he knows exactly what you need. First thing he wants to do, he wants to make sure everything's right with you and him. He says, he, he, he wants to make sure everything's good. So if there's anything in your life that you say, you know, I just don't know. Say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. Lord, I surrender my life to you afresh. I, that's where it begins. If you're in this room and you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost today, and you say, you know what, I desire the gift of the Spirit. Or maybe you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you haven't, you haven't operated in that gift for some time. 
You, you haven't felt that for some time. I want you to step out of your seat and I want you to come to the front of this building right now. I don't know what you're waiting on. I want you to just come. Come, 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 come. We'll spread out all across the front. We can move chairs, do whatever we need to do. But there's a wind coming. There's a wind coming. Hallelujah. Now I want you to just lift your voice and I want you to talk to the Lord how you talk to anybody else and I want you to tell him your heart. And right now, I'm believing for salvation. I'm breathing for a freshness of the Holy Ghost. And if you have a physical need, a mental need, an emotional need, a, a spiritual, I'm believing that healing is going to become right where you are this morning. Because can I tell you, today is not just the day of the wind, but it's also the day of the reversal beginning. So today, right now, as they just begin to minister in song, saints of God, in your pews, lift your hands, stretch them this way. Let's just pray one for another this morning right now. Just let the Lord use you this morning as we Mr. pray. Here, I just want to thank you for watching the service with us today and being a part of it. We ask that you stay in touch with us. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And we'll see you again soon. We love you. So does God.